and look at that. We are in our notes, and this is 1.4, number four. And I'm just gonna start over again. I know we did A um, on Monday, but it was right at the end. I was scrambling, hurrying, and we just did So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this problem. All right, so we're in our notes. We're on uh, section 1.4, and it's number four. Ollie, you want to get it out? Do you have it? Nope. Um, and we're just going to start over with A, all right? Does that match your records that we were doing A right when the period ended? And it was like, uh, okay. So here's the deal. If you're looking backwards, over to the side here, let me remind you that if f of x were 3x plus 2 and g of x um, was x squared, for example, if I said to you, if I gave you these functions and said, let's find f of g of x, you would take g of x, the equation, x squared, and plug it in. So you get 3x squared plus 2, right? You take this and plug it in right here. Take the g function and plug it into f. Now, this exercise is the backwards of that. Someone has already done this. Now you are going to go back and find the original two functions. And there's more than one answer, so we could come up with different answers for sure, but there's an easy way, I think, to do it. If you look at this problem right here, this is the problem on the sheet. Two things have happened in this problem. If, if you stick a number in, if I say, okay, let's evaluate this, put in six. The first thing you would do with that six is times by two, right? And then you would subtract one. So you need a function that times is by two, and then another function that will subtract one in that order. So in the composition, g is the first function. So you need g to multiply by two. And then you need f to take that answer and subtract one. So you need f to look like this. Now don't be confused, remember, when you do the composition, you take the g function and plug it into f, right? So I would be taking 2x and putting it right here. That's why that's an x. That's not a 2x, that's an x, because the 2x gets plugged in there. If you built this composition, if you actually took these two functions and did f of g of x, do you see how you get that? because you take g and plug it into f. So this is the answer. These are two of the functions that you can come up with that would give you this. There are other ones, but they're harder. So it's easier just to do this. All right, let's look at the next one. Same idea. What is happening in this problem? Two things. What do you need these functions to do? You need a function that will add two, and then a function that will square, in that order. So look at your composition. The first function, which is g, has to add two. And then what does the second function have to do? Square. So again, it's x squared, because when you build the composition, you take this and plug it in here. So that's how you would get your x plus 2, because this gets plugged in here when you do that. Right? So there they are. Okay. Um, well, it looks like I forgot to fill this one in. So 
let's do another one. Let me just make one up to put in there because it looks like I forgot it. So let's do, um, let's find two functions that give us This one's a little harder. Does anybody see why this one's a little harder? How many things are happening here? Three. We got a square, we got a multiply by three, and we got a subtract four. So we need three things, but we only have two functions. So what does that mean? One of the functions is going to have to do more than one thing. So again, many different answers are possible. First function is g of x. Jacob? Would that just be x squared minus 4 x squared? Okay, let's talk about that. So x squared minus 4. So g is the function that squares and subtracts 4. Now, that's not going to work. Because, let's go back to the order of the problem. If you put a number in here, what do you do first? You square, but then you have to multiply by 3, and then we subtract 4. So this isn't going to work, Jacob, because the functions are out of order. Do you understand that? If we had parentheses around here, then that would be fine. So what is another idea? Because we don't have parentheses around there. So I can't do that part. Can I get by with just x squared? Yes. Okay. And if I just do x squared, then what does the next function have to do? It has to multiply by 3 and subtract 4. Now remember, if you build the composition, you take this answer and plug it in here. You take this answer and plug it in here. Would that work? Yeah. Now, someone else might say, I want the first function to do two things. So, because there's three things to do in the problem. If you're going to let the first function do two things, what would those two things have to be? Square and multiply by 3. And then the second function, the only thing left for it to do would be to subtract 4. The functions have to go in order. Okay? Now, I want to go back to Jacob's idea, and I just want to show you why that wouldn't work. This, this was the original plan. I'm going to square and subtract 4 and then multiply by 3. Let's build that composition. If I actually built this composition, this would go in right here, right? So look what we have. Would we end up with what we wanted? No, we end up with 3x squared minus 12, right? That's why it won't work. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you okay with that? It's a little bit confusing for sure. It's all right. Yeah. Yep. Since I made that one up, I can make up another one for sure. One more, and then we'll start looking at our review sheet because there's some there too. Um, let's say we've got a function that does um, 2x minus 8 over 3. Now this is another one. How many things are happening in this problem? We're times in by 2, subtracting 8, and dividing by 3. And would you agree that's the order? So if you're building two functions, g has to come first. The way this is written, now be careful, because if this is written like this, then f comes first, right? So pay attention to the way the problem is written. All right, so you got three things going on. What is the very first thing that happens? Multiply by 2. So at the very least, your first function has to be 2x. 
multiply by two. Now, if that's what you do for your first function, then your second one has to subtract eight and divide by three. If you let your first one multiply by two and subtract eight, then all your last one has to do is divide by three. Josh? Wouldn't that make the x's uh, the second power? No, because remember, you're not multiplying, you're plugging in. So like if I'm doing this one, I am plugging this in for this x. Remember, it's not a multiply, it's a substitution. You're plugging it in. All right. Okay, let's get out the review sheet that I just gave you. Let's just start going down in order and we'll get as much of this done as we can and then you'll have a chance to kind of look it over and ask about other ones if you want. But number one says find implicit functions. What does that mean? What does that mean I'm finding implicit functions? Um, guys, I'm on the review 1.1 to 1.4. Uh, you don't have it unless you printed it. It's in Schoology though. I just handed it out today, Annie. But it is in Schoology. It's called 1.1, 1 1.4. 1 uh, that is not a function. But we're going to find two pieces of it that are functions. And when we put them together, they'll give us this. We talked about this the other day, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. How do we do this? You have to, like, take I have to get y by itself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna divide by four. Is that okay? And then I will square root. And I'm gonna get two separate answers. Right? One will be positive and one will be negative, and you don't have to write the plus sign I just did to emphasize. One is the positive root, one is the negative root. These very seldom simplify, but this one does, because we have the square root of x over two, right? And this one would be negative the square root of x over two. Those are the implicit functions. This would sketch on your calculator, and this would sketch on your calculator, and if you sketched them both together, you would get that. You can't get that by itself. You have to do it in the two pieces. Okay, what about B? Same exact directions. So what do we do for B? Same thing, right? So if I get 2y, actually, I can divide everything by 2 if I want. That might make the numbers a little easier. So I'll divide everything by 2. So y squared equals 4 minus x squared. So what are my implicit functions? y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared and y equals negative square root 4 minus x squared. Now, do not be tempted. That does not simplify. Once you put a minus or a plus in there and add or subtract, it's all over. There's no simplifying. You can't do individual pieces. If it's a division or a multiplication, you can simplify. But as soon as you put a plus or an add or subtract in there, done. Okay? Don't do it. That's it. Anything else you try to do will make it wrong. So don't do anything else. All right. Is that one we can all get right on test day? Implicit functions? All right. Number two. Oh, this is what we just practiced. We 
you may have actually done one exactly like this. Um, find two functions, and again, there's more than one possible answer. So your answer may not be exactly mine. I do want you to pay attention to the order of the letters, though, here. This means your F function will be first, right? Remember in composition, the one closest to the letter or number is the starting one. So F is first, E is second. How many things are happening here? Three. Squaring, times you by three, subtracting, in that order. So what do you want your first function to be? 3x squared. So you're going to let the first function do the squaring and the multiplying by 3. Then the only thing left for the second function is to subtract 1. Remember, if you were building this, you would take this and pop it right in here. And that would give you 3x squared minus 1. Another option, let the first one do the squaring, and then the second one times this by three and subtracts one. That would be another perfectly okay option. I snuck a few review problems in here. So number three is a review problem. What kind of an equation is number three? Well, it's a quadratic. So with a quadratic, you're going to want to get it set equal to zero and then figure out what to do with it, right? You have options. It doesn't say do this or that. It just says solve it somehow. So an x squared equation is a quadratic. You're going to want to get it set equal to zero. Then you're on your own. What do you think? Okay, somebody besides Jacob knows how to solve this. You could use the quadratic formula, absolutely. I don't know if it factors, it doesn't look promising, I don't think it factors, but some of them do, so you could factor. You could also complete the square. I wouldn't in this one because there'll be fractions. So I think the quadratic formula is a great option. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The quadratic formula is something that you need to know always and forever, so don't forget it just because we moved beyond that. Uh, what's under here? That's going to be what? 8, uh, 24, 96, 96. is that negative 92? Did I do that right? I think that's right, isn't it? So now what? Do I cancel? I got twos all over. Can I cancel? No, 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 not yet. What do I have to do first? Well, I got to pull the negative out. Still can't cancel. But maybe 92 breaks down. Actually, it does, right? So 2 plus or minus 2i root 23 over 6. You can try to triangle it out. Now I can triangle it out. Love that expression. When you cancel a 2 out, though, you're left with 1s, guys. Don't just forget. There's a 1 there. So your final answer is 1 plus or minus i root 23 over 3. All good? Here's another review problem. We cannot forget this stuff. What are we going to do with the squares, or with the exponents, I mean?
So we're going to move the negatives around. I think I'll square that out also. So that's going to be 25x squared. That y is coming down, so I'll just pull him down. The z to the fifth stays up there. 10 stays here, but the x to the fourth goes up. The y cube stays down, and the z to the first goes up. So all I did was square that out, 25x squared, and then I moved the things with the negatives and left the other things alone. Now, that's a fraction, 25 over 10. Those are not exponents. That is a normal run-of-the-mill fraction. So 25 over 10 would reduce to 5 over 2. Now, we have two x's on the or two x terms on the top. They do not cancel each other out. They total you have two x's and four x's, so you have a total of six x's. The y's do not cancel out, they total up. We got seven of them. And the z's do not cancel out, there are six of them. Old news, right? Okay? One more review, it looks like, number five. Take a look at that problem. Do not use the quadratic formula. It's not quadratic. What are we going to do to solve this guy? Factor by grouping. Very, very good. So the first two terms, I can pull out the x squared. What comes out of the last two? Negative nine. And when you pull out the negative and the nine, you're left with x plus two again. Common factor of x plus two. At this point, you can continue factoring if you want, or you can jump straight to the answers. We know x will be negative 2, or what's going to come out of here? That's minus 3x plus 3, so plus or minus 3. How many answers did we get? 3. Look at the original problem. You're going to get 3. Fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that the, the degree of the polynomial is the number of roots that it has. All right, number six. This is current material here. Number six, not really review. Find all of the asymptotes and holes. So what do we do? We have to find all of the asymptotes and holes. Factor everything. So how does the top factor? Uh, what did you say? X minus 3 plus 1? How about the bottom? Be careful. What might you do on the bottom first? You might take a 2 out. Now I can factor the bottom. How does it factor? Keep the two, yeah. X plus one, X plus five. Yeah, don't forget the two has to come along. The two stays in the problem. What do we notice, Hector, that makes us so excited? One will cancel. And what does that mean, Hector, when something cancels out? Yep, we're going to have a hole. And that hole is going to be a point, so it will have an x and a y. And the x comes from...
from here, right? So the x is going to be negative 1. What's our y going to be? Well, I don't know, but I have to figure it out, right? So I'll come back to my problem, which is right here now. So negative 1 minus 3 over 2 times negative 1 plus 5. What do we get? Negative 4. Yep, negative 1 half. Brenda, what's the matter? Uh, no, she's not. Huh? Oh, she's like, no. Okay. <coughs> so far, so good? Now, we need our asymptotes and holes. So, we got our hole. So, how about a horizontal asymptote or a vertical asymptote? I don't care. Look right here now. This is where we're, we are. What can you tell me? x is negative 5. Look right there. Can x be negative 5? No, that would be very bad. That's my vertical asymptote. Directly tied to domain. x cannot be negative 5. That means your vertical asymptote is at negative 5. What about a horizontal? Box them in. What do we get here when we box that in? 1 half. y equals 1 half. Could have done that in the beginning also. Everybody okay? All right, the next one is a little bit tricky. What shape is the next one going to be? Number seven. It's going to be a parabola. That's right. Did you notice, though, there's a negative in front of it? I'm going to write that negative x squared plus 3. What does that negative in front of it do? Upside down. So this would be a parabola upside down. What does that do? Move it up three. So now you have a picture that looks like this. This is the point zero three because we moved our parabola up three, but we also tipped it over because of the negative. So there's the sketch. What's the domain of that function? All reals. So we'll say negative infinity to infinity. That's our domain. This picture goes all the way left and all the way right and there are no breaks. Is it bounded? Well, it's bounded above. So we would say bounded above at y equals 3. has a ceiling, but no floor. All right, tell me about the domain of number eight. Just the domain, take a look at it. What can you tell me about the domain in number eight? X cannot be negative five. Right, everyone? So if X can't be negative five, you have to write that as an interval. So think about your number line. What you're telling me is all that and all that. So negative infinity to negative 5 or negative 5 to infinity. That's your domain. Good. Y equals sine x minus 1. Sketch it. Sines and cosines, especially since they're so new to us in terms of graphing them, are a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and dash in my original. You don't have to do this, but it always helps me, so I'm going to do it. How high and low does the regular sign go? 1 and negative 1. The hills are up 1, the valleys are down 1. By the way, when we sketch a sign, Starting with the origin, sign goes to the origin. Make your hill first. It is a hill and then a valley. Okay. Now that's the original. What is happening to it? It's going down one. 
which means that the tops of the hills won't be at one. Now the tops of the hills will be at zero. So we're going to have a picture that looks like this. Now it's going to go down to negative two and up to zero. So when this talks about is it bounded, the answer is yes, right? It's bounded below at negative two and above at zero. The purple curve, the new curve. Everybody get that? Below at negative two, above at zero. The sine and cosine are one of your few functions that are truly bounded on both sides. Okay, what does 10 look like? What's 10? That's your reciprocal function. So that is the one that looks like this everybody remember that what's its domain Josh exactly so it's everything from negative infinity to zero or from zero to infinity perfect can't be zero look at the denominator x can't be zero Look at the picture. Isn't it broken right here? Is it bounded? No. If you looked at each piece individually, like if you just looked at this piece, just this piece, you could say it's bounded below but not if you look at the whole picture because clearly it's not bounded below. So that one has no bounds at all, upper or lower. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, we're rolling through this, you're doing great. What's the domain of 11? Domain of 11. Well, for sure, x can't be 2, right? For sure. And then what do I know about this? If x has to be bigger than or equal to 0, which means that x has to be less than or equal to 4. Did I do my arithmetic right there? I subtracted 4 and then divided by a negative and switched the sign. So x has to be less than or equal to 4, but it can't be 2. So how am I going to write that domain? We're less than or equal to 4 but we can't equal two. Negative infinity, negative infinity to two. And two to four, and I can include four. So I'll bracket four in. We all good? Um, okay. Number 12, it just says what's the range, but it might help you to graph it. I don't know. What shape is number 12? It's going to be a V, but the V is going to be moved. Which way does the V move? Right two and up one. Is that okay with everybody? Does that help you answer the question, what is the range? The range is everything from here up, right? 
So can you say one to infinity? Would that be a good way of saying the range? Good grief, 13 is another review problem. I guess we'll do it. Um, many of you do these problems differently and I don't care as long as you're getting the right answer. The way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna divide everything by five. I'm going to draw a number line, put two fifths in the middle, and then count forward ten fifths. So this will be twelve fifths, and then make eight fifths. And I stand shade in between. So my answer and your answer, I don't know how you're doing it. You can do it different ways, but make sure you're coming up with that answer. So this says the distance between some number and two-fifths is less than two. So I thought of two as ten-fifths, so I added ten-fifths and subtracted ten-fifths. And that's what you want to come up with as your answer. All right. Well, we're almost done with that. That's good. Um, Looks like on the back side, we got a couple calculator ones, so we'll get our calculators out next time. And we'll go over our quizzes um, tomorrow, I see, right? So we'll go over our quizzes tomorrow and finish reviewing. So here's what I'd like you to do, guys. Would you, um, I gave you actually an additional review, extra review there. Would you look over what we haven't done yet? on both of these sheets so you're prepared tomorrow to ask questions because we're taking a test on Friday. Uh -huh.